Hello and welcome. Today we will be discussing the role of men and women in today's society. Joining us is a spiritual teacher, Tony Samara. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. The role of a man and a woman in today's society is changing. What has changed and is it going in the right direction? Okay, well that's a very big question. I think in today, today's society that um, the major change is that we have lost touch with the more divine quality inside of ourselves. This means that man has lost, um, men have lost their um, connection and their relationship to what it means to be truly masculine and women have lost in the same way, you know, their connection to what it means to be truly feminine but in a much more profound way than just pretty or um, cute. Um, and that I believe to be um, a sad thing because actually when this happens we lose our connection to the divine which is what I teach about, you know, our connection to something that is much more beyond ourselves, much more beyond the individual. Um, and I believe that the relationship between man and woman is the quickest and most enjoyable way to um, be in touch with this. And because modern society has so socialized our way and thinking beyond that connection from early childhood, and if you just look around you, do you know how things are done? Um, then we just don't even trust or believe that that is possible. You know, we've even lost the hope that that is a possibility because it just, we don't see it in our friends, we don't see it in our family, and we just don't see it anywhere. We don't have a reference point as um, was practiced before where, you know, the relationship between man and woman was sacred and there were many aspects of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman that complemented um, one another so that the relationship was a journey to discover this more beautiful part of ourselves. And what can we do can living we do? in this society of today <laughs> if we want to get in that, mm -hmm. into that direction? I think that's, it's very difficult. Um, it's very difficult because by ourselves I'm not sure that we can easily do anything because, you know, as human beings we need to have some knowledge to do something, you know, we need to have an understanding how to do something before we can actually put it into practice. So the first thing I would say is that it's important to find someone that you are, are able to be totally honest and open and loving with. So not just to find a normal relationship, you know, like people are saying, you know, find a relationship so that you're happy and you fall in love, which I call infatuation, but more a relationship where there is a deep connection that allows for that connection, that deep love, to guide you to that space where, you know, it is possible to discover parts of yourself that are hidden. They're still there, but that are hidden, and you're honest enough to allow that process to open up, and trusting enough that it's okay to open up because sometimes, you know, it feels a little bit scary to do that just because people are worried, you know, if, if they open up to such a uh, deep level that they may be hurt, you know, that, that is one of the big things in society. You know, people say, don't go so deep because it may, you know, who knows what might happen and you may get very hurt. So there is a resistance. So that knowledge, I think you find in the person that you love you know, because together then you create an alchemical process where, you know, you go beyond the limitations that society and the mind and emotions impose upon what it means to be a man or what it means to be a woman. Beyond that, I think you need to um, understand some very basic concepts, um, which I believe were practiced in ancient times. And this is, some people call this Tantra, but I don't like the word Tantra because modern society this means you know sexuality and for me tantra is not at all you know sexuality is part of it but it's not at all that it's more you know discovering what it means and um, to utilize aspects of yourself in a relationship and especially the body and so how to relax the body and for me the body is not just physical the body is much more so how to relax the body to such a point where the body can guide you 
um, in the relationship, and that is called instinct and following, you know, intuition, rather than, you know, just listening to the emotions and listening to the mind. And they are impermanent, so if you just listen to them or you're just attached to those, then the problem usually is that when you fall a little bit out of love or when things get difficult, you know, um, the, the magic between two people disappears. But when you're in touch with your body in a very specific way, like I believe Jesus and Mary Magdalene um, were, then there is a spiritual bond because the body leads, the body I believe to be the temple and then that temple leads you to a space where, you know, there is a very deep alchemical process between two people. Um, you know, it's vague because I can't really be too specific, but I'm just giving a general idea. This is what I teach. Um, basically, I've been working with this concept for now more than 20 years with people, you know, how to let go of all the limitations inside of you so that you're open and honest and direct and courageous enough to be able to share um, your deepest part of yourself with another person. And when you do this, then you are opening to the divine because this is what the divine, I believe, wants people to do, you know, people meaning man and woman, you know, to get closer because this on earth, on this physical dimension, that is the um, most um, powerful meditation, which I call Tantra, you know, um, it's the most powerful meditation to be able to open up in this way. And what is the main difference or the main differences between a man and a woman on how they perceive reality, how they perceive this world? I've heard, you know, people have talked about books, you know, that there is a lot of difference in perception. There is a book, isn't there? Um, men are from Mars and mm -hmm. women are from Venus or whatever. Um, um, I didn't read the book, so I have no idea. Um, but I don't believe this to be totally true. I think, you know, that's a generalization. But if you want a generalization, I feel that, and I'm not just saying this, I feel that women are more in touch with themselves simply because of the physical structure of the body, you know, having a period and just being able to have a baby. Do you know, the body is much more in touch with um, subtle elements such as the moon and energies that are exist here on Earth. So they have a much more clear ability to, to um, sense things and to be very more connected to the emotions than most men. This is a generalization because then you can get some women who are totally out of touch with their emotions, you know, so it's not to say you're a woman so you're in touch with your emotions, but the latent potential that is there. So for me, the woman is basically like um, the vehicle, you know, is like the moon, you know, it's, a, it's a, a space, a very expansive space. And men are, can be in touch with their emotions but are much more like the active principle. Um, and so they are able to, um, they're like the sun, you know, they're able to help um, understand and create um, a connection in that open space. I hope I'm making sense. So, you know, there is a major difference, you know, t to be a man and to be a woman, there is a major difference. But in the end, when you're connected to those aspects of yourself, then it's, it's the same because it's, it's the connection. Um, that matters. So do you think that this um, changing of the roles of each gender in today's society yes. is the right direction? Actually our society is not healthy or balanced at all if you compare it to you know some o o old traditional societies. Our society is masculine and only looks at very masculine aspects as being important so you know work achievement, competition, um, also in, in the feminine sense it's all about the external, you know, the beauty, the physical beauty, what you do, how you do, what you dress, and the internal aspects are lost. And those are the aspects that are important to, to work with, what I was saying previously. So I don't believe our society is at all free. I think it's much more 
um, complicated to live in this society than it was in some more traditional societies where there were taboos that prevented you from doing certain things that were, you know, easy to see. In our society, there is, this is why young people today, you know, um, find it very difficult. There is so much pressure to be and do things in a certain way. So that sense of freedom, it's not, it's not there, you know, people, you have to be very strong to say, I don't want to follow in that direction and I want to do something for myself uh, because I believe that's important. You know, most people just fall into the old and easy ways of doing things. And it's so masculine that even our perception of reality is changed. You know, if we look at how we look at time and how we act out our lives, you know, it is a very masculine way of doing things. So I, I don't believe this to be balanced at all. And it's our society, so we have to live with it. Uh, and this is where I believe, you know, we can't just say no, we, you know, or try to leave society and go somewhere and, you know, create some sort of paradise. I believe we can do that in a relationship when we bring those aspects that are missing on the outside back into the relationship. And then that can create um, a sense of freedom to do what you want to do outside in society. And that requires two people to be so close that, you know, their reference point isn't, I have to dress up in this way, or I have to do this, or I have to create this for myself to be happy. You know, it is the relationship between two people. And what are the normal average relationships between men and women in today's society creating? if we look at the society as a whole? When you have to look at statistics to see that they don't last. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm told anyway that, you know, um, marriage is absolutely an institution and it's not really, I'm not against marriage, but what, how I see it is that, you know, it's a romantic idea, but for most people it's not really a happy uh, ending. Um, and you know, most relationships, they are very nice in the beginning because Western society places a lot on romantic infatuation, uh, which me infatuation means that you just, you are not really seeing the person for who they are. You're falling in love with an idea. And this is what I mean, you know, coming back to the body. So you, instead of actually relating to the person and seeing who the person is, you are projecting an image of who you would like the person to be. So infatuation lasts for as long as that image is maintained, and it can't be for 10 years. You know, usually people, you know, after a few months or maybe three or four months, say, okay, there are aspects of this person that I'm not so comfortable with. And so then the intensity of love um, disappears and that connection wanes. And then the relationship is a relationship. People stay in the relationship because they're not wanting to be alone. They don't want to be lonely. They're afraid of leaving the relationship because it may mean that this or that happened. You know, there, there is not that deep connection that creates the alchemical process because I believe relationship can go deeper. You know, it's not that, you know, there is a romantic uh, few months in the beginning and then, well, you just live together. I believe actually if you are listening to the person and listening to your body and listening to the reality of the other person that you're in relationship with, then you can only fall more and more in love with that person. It's impossible not to because you, you know, you recognize more and more of what you love with time rather than, you know, saying, oh, I don't like this because this was just an idea of the person. You completely see um, what is beautiful about the person. And I think this is not so easy because we don't have experience in this. Our parents usually don't have that sort of love. You know, they, they maintain a relationship for the good of the children or because it's what they've done and they don't know anything else. But they haven't got that sense of love like Romeo and Juliet, you know, that amazing sense where, you know, all you can do is you want to be with the person and you want to share more and more of who you are with the person and the person wants to do the same thing that creates um, a deep oneness and this oneness you know creates more and more love um, I don't see that in today's most people you know I don't see that 
how to how to bring that more about i think you really have to find someone that is the person that you love you know not just have an idea and that takes courage because you know sometimes we fall in love with people because they fit into our lifestyle you know sometimes you may fall in love with someone that is so totally different from what you expect or what you think um, and that is usually a sign that that person is more your complementary um, rather than you know just the normal relationships of finding someone that is um, fits into the picture of your mind and if someone is currently in a relationship yeah. and would like to create a relationship as you described it, this is, is it possible? I mean, should he or she try it with the partner that he is with? Uh -huh. Or is it, is it absolutely necessary for the partner also to be open to it? Or Of course. Yeah, of course. one person cannot do it on the Absolutely own. not, because love is about connection. And if there is no connection, to pretend that there is a connection is also what people have been doing in the Western world for a very long time. You know, it's a pretend, it's a game, uh, it's a dream, hoping that the person will eventually change and that, you know, they will recognize your love. And that cannot happen because the alchemical process requires that both people in the moment are open in that way to each other. And if the other person is not open, then you know, it's, you're being more like a mother or a sister or a brother, you know, you're not really, and people have that sort of relationship, you know, where they mother each other, mother or father each other, or, you know, are more friends, good friends, but, you know, not real, uh, not the profound love that I'm speaking about. So it requires that the other person is open. But if both people are open, it is possible to come to an understanding to let go of the old reference points. Um, and this requires courage, and this is what I teach in uh, my retreats, you know, how can you do this? You know, it, it's, it's difficult. When you have a habit, when you're used to doing something in a relationship, the tendency is to fall into that habit. And if you don't know that you can do something differently or you haven't got experience, then, you know, it, even if both of you want to change, you know, it's not that easy. So this is why, you know, I teach many um, very core um, things that one can incorporate in their life um, to, to change a relationship from being one that is not very deep to being one where, you know, everything is um, communicated and everything is beautifully open. One of the first things is honesty. Um, and being honest is not just, you know, speaking, but really revealing who you are with courage and with trust. And I find most relationships have a level of honesty, but not a complete honesty. And I, I think this is because, you know, society is very superficial, you know, it's all about um, image and, and that gets carried on in our emotional makeup. So this is what I work with. And the way I do this is by going through different aspects of ourselves in meditation that may limit that honesty and openness from happening. And first we have to start with ourselves, you know, to see how, what, what we do that doesn't really show who we are to the world. And, you know, it's easier to do this internally through meditation. And it's a whole process that takes many days. Um, and once you do this, you know, it is very good to have the support of your partner to continue to go deeper and further. And when you know and you trust and you're honest and open to your partner, they can support you and you can support them. And that support then leads to a very um, mystical space. You know, you, you, you go from love to divine love. Difficult to put into words, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your wisdom. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish for you to have the courage to create a deep and loving relationship. Thank you for watching and goodbye.